Okay, I'm now in the process of having this on the lowest setting of the adjuster. And I've just basically started the, uh, the flame on this Vesta. Now I'm going to turn it up. That's uh, about as high as it's going to go. And that's off. I have now opened the adjuster one and a quarter turns from the lowest setting. I've started the Vesta. Now I'm going to turn it up one half turn. And off. I now have this with the adjuster open all the way. Actually, the last one was open about one complete turn from stop. This is now a total of two and a quarter turns open from the lowest setting. I'm turning up the adjuster, I mean up the uh, valve. And off. This is now using the butane cartridge and I've just started it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up one half turn. about maximum and then off. This composite is pretty much self-explanatory. There does not seem to be much difference in the three propane uh, flames that are demonstrated here. They seem to be pretty much the same. There may be a slight degree of um, increase in the flame height and overall fullness of the various burns above the lowest setting for the propane, but it's relatively minor, which means that most likely the maximum usable amount of gas that is uh, going to the burner is present even when the adjustment screw is at its lowest setting. The image that shows the butane, however, is definitely different. It shows that the output from the butane is somewhat less overall. This little uh, LP gas adapter appears to contain or retain some of the gas within it even after you have disconnected it from the bottle. I actually have removed this adapter from both the propane bottle and the Vesta stove and now I have reconnected it to the Vesta stove. This is going to be an example of what happens to show you how much retained fuel is still within this adapter even after you disconnected everything. I'm going to have this torch going and I will now open up the burner. You saw a little bit of a, of a flame that came out. That's all that there was, but it's still a significant amount of retained fuel. This is once again showing the amount of residual gas that's within the adapter even after you've disconnected it from the uh, propane bottle. I'm now opening up the valve. As you can see there was a small spurt of gas that came through and so there is some retained gas within this little, this little adapter.
You don't have to be that concerned, though, about the angle of the bottle, as long as it's not grossly um, tilted. This is an example of just using a glycerin bottle that's 80% full. The appearance of what a one-pound cylinder might look like if you could see the propane level. And as you can see, the amount of fluid that is in it is such that even if you have the bottle fairly laid over, it is still not going to have liquid fuel going into the fuel line. However, a more worrisome concern regarding the use of propane is the higher pressure that is associated with the use of this fuel over butane. And if you use one of these stoves that is designed for lower pressure fuels, you could overpressurize some key elements such as the fuel line. So I'm suggesting that the arrangement of some of these stoves that have a control valve that is both at the fuel source and also at the stove be used in such a way that the valve that is near the stove remains wide open. That way as the gas goes from the propane bottle into the line, it is immediately evacuated through the jet of the stove rather than being trapped between a closed valve at the stove and an open valve at the propane bottle, which might cause a rupture or other kind of failure or certainly possibly a leak in the fuel line. Again, these stoves are not meant for propane and um, even though the ad for this Covey adapter doesn't specifically mention propane, the bottles that this goes to are propane, so it is assumed that you will be using propane, which again has a higher pressure. Likewise, for those situations where you may be using one of these stands, like I had mentioned in part one, where you can put the burner, such as the Primus burner for the lab, directly on top of the stand. If you close off the valve of the stove or burner that's sitting on top of the stand, you are effectively doing the same thing with that as you would for one of these stoves that has two control valves. So it's important that if you use something like these small burners, like the Primus burner or some other similar burner sitting on top of these stands, that that particular stove is left with the control valve wide open and all the control or adjustment of the flame height is performed using the valve that is at the fuel source.